All right, YouTubers, let me turn the camera here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have an interesting video that doesn't come around very often, actually. We don't have many opportunities to do this, so we're taking the kitchen here real quick. You can see that my lovely wife is preparing dinner. And on the stove, what time is it? Oh, I don't know. What time is it on the microwave? I don't know, because the power is out. It's really windy today. And uh, Marcus and I were out working in the barn and all at once the lights went out and I thought, what in the world? So, today's video, we are gonna show you how to hook up our generator. I'm gonna turn the camera on for this walk out here so you can hear how windy it is. Uh, the gusts have been, I don't know, 40 to 50 miles per hour. Sustained winds probably 20, 25, maybe 30 and I'm pretty sure there's a tree somewhere that knocked this power out. So let's take a look. So I hope you can see and hear this with the tractor running. Marcus is gonna lower this down and I'll show you with the quick hitch how easy this is to hook up. This is a 15,000 watt generator. This will actually run off of a 50 amp uh, interconnect to my main breaker panel in the house. Now the barn is on its own uh, meter, so it will not run off of this generator unless I were to hook it up dedicated to there. But what I found is that when you have a power outage, I'm not really gonna be working in the shop anyway. And if I am, I can switch power from the house to the, to the barn. So uh, essentially I got this uh, plug here. It just plugs into the generator here. And there's breakers inside of here. I used to start with everything off. Make sure the, the double pole breaker here is the one that runs this outlet, this receptacle, and that's off. We're gonna turn over here. And on this end, I've got this twist lock plug that's gonna go right inside this generator receptacle. Now we're hooked up, time to go make the interconnect in the house so everybody's safe. So I don't know if you can see all this in here. Now we're inside the house and as an emergency note for people who wanna like be prepared for emergencies and stuff, make sure you have some flashlights around the house. Um, a good flashlight, good batteries, and kind of ready for whatever's going on here. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna disconnect the main breaker. That takes us off of the power grid from the, oh, you can't see that. So the top, I've disconnected the main breaker here. So that separates us from the utility power. And now I'm going to engage this other breaker that essentially this one connects to my generator receptacle. So now we're tied in with the generator. So what we'll be able to do now is go get the generator started. And once everything is up to speed 
and ready to go, we'll kick on that breaker that's at the generator and the house should be powered up. Let's go give it a try. Now this part here is going to get a little bit loud because I've got to bring the tractor up to full RPMs that will get me 540 RPMs at my power takeoff. Then I'm going to come back to the back of the tractor and I'm going to look at this gauge. And this gauge, in order to give me the correct voltage in the house, this needle has to be up to right here in this green. So what I typically do is I'll bring the needle to the high side of the green with no load and then I'll bring the breaker in and we'll see where it ends up and we'll adjust from there. Now this generator being 15,000 watts, it's actually capable of running my entire house, including the air conditioner and the water heater and all the pumps and everything that, that needs to be run. It can actually run the entire house. I've turned the air conditioner off because I don't want that initial spike in amperage when we start because it could kick this breaker. This is a 50 amp breaker that's gonna serve the house. And as long as everything else is on and running and we kick things on one at a time, it will run the entire house. So this is gonna get a little loud, so I'll get it going and then I'll show you what this gauge looks like. I apologize if this is too loud. This is what the gauge looks like. So here we are in the house, and as you can see, ta-da, we have power. So, everything seems to be working well, and we're back in business until the grid comes on, back on. Now what I usually do, we'll go back over here to the window. You see the tractor set up. I wanna talk about this for a second. The seat on the tractor is flipped up. If you didn't know this, on Kubota tractors, there's a three-way switch under the seat. Um, when you sit down, it senses that you're there. When you stand up, it senses that you're not there. And there's a third position on that switch where if you lift the seat up within so many seconds of uh, getting off of it, uh, you can actually leave the seat up and the PTO will stay engaged and run. Now, for safety purposes, just in case anything were to happen to this tractor, I've put it in neutral. And you can see I've parked the front end loader on the ground to keep it from moving and the park brake is on. Um, anybody that wonders uh, if it's good for tractors or not to, to run them like this, these diesel tractors are made to run like this. They're made to put into full throttle and run them like that, whether you're working ground or, or doing a project around the house or in this case running the generator. So um, I find it to be a nice little setup and now for the evening here we've got power in our house so we can take showers and get everything ready to go. and. Uh, We'll have a pleasant evening even though the grid is offline right now. Now that we've got lights, I want to come back out up down in the basement here and show you what I got going on at the switch panel here. So the main breaker is the one up top here. And like I said, we've disconnected that. So we are disconnected from the grid, that is off. So even if the utility power came back on or if a utility worker was working on the line, uh, my generator power is not going back onto the grid. Um, the generator wouldn't work if you did that anyway and, uh, you, and it, people could get hurt. The other thing I want to talk about is this breaker right here is the one that you've seen me engage to activate my outlet. Now check your jurisdiction if you're going to do this. Some places require that you have a metal slide gate that would prevent you from turning this breaker on if this one was still on. It's a kind of a manual safety uh, it's not a bad idea. I've been wanting to put one on this panel for a long time, and I need to go ahead and do that uh, in case anybody else were to you know, try to hook this generating system up. Um, but uh, not a bad idea. You might need an electrician to do this work for you. Um, I'm pretty handy, so I kind of did mine myself. But um, always think safety first. If you don't know what you're doing, don't try to hook a system like this up.
notes on this generator setup again. Um, if you are going to try to purchase a power takeoff generator for your tractor, you need to know, you need to do a little bit of math and figure out what your horsepower at your power takeoff is. Um, the tractor can only produce so much power. Power is converted from mechanical power in that generator to electrical power. And like I said, the tractor is only capable of so much. In my case, uh, I think I have about 31 horsepower out the back of the tractor. And it's like uh, half that times a thousand roughly to, uh, to save you the math. will give you approximately what your tractor will be able to do. So a 30 horsepower should be right around a 15,000 watt uh, for wattage. And that's what we have. So kind of the tractor and the, uh, the, the generator match up well in my case. Um, another thing that I hear guys say on the internet blogs is when the power is out and you got an emergency, you're not going to be wanting to have your tractor tied up making power. Um, I disagree with that and I'll explain why. This setup with the tractor is going to provide me with power for the entire house for as long as I want it or until I run out of fuel. Now, in this case, within about an hour, all the pumps will have ran, the refrigerators and the freezers will be cooled down, the house will either be heated or cooled depending on if you're running your furnace or your air conditioner, um, meals will be made, things will be done. You could shut the power off for a while and do whatever you need to with the tractor uh, during that off time and in a couple more hours, bring it back, turn it back on for a couple hours and you'd be ready to go. If you were to try to run this tractor non-stop, it'll do it. It'll run day and night and as long as you have fuel to put in it. Um, but obviously you're going to go through your fuel a lot faster. Which brings me to my next point. Storage of fuel. If you only keep a five gallon can around, you're probably going to run out of fuel. Um, in my case, I'm going to walk you over here. I think I've showed this before. I actually keep... Whoops, sorry about that. I kicked my tripod. I actually keep almost 60 gallons of fuel on site. Now, two of these are empty right now, so I've got 30 gallons of fuel plus what's in the tractor. It takes about seven gallons to fill the tank up. So as you can tell, I've got a lot of tanks of fuel available for me to use in the event of an emergency. And if my calculations are correct, if I do a couple hours on, couple hours off system like I just described to you, I could go for a couple weeks easily. Um, if the power were out for a long extended period of time. Now today, I'll turn the camera back around. I apologize if it's fast. Today is actually a beautiful day. It's just windy. So somewhere on our local grid, uh, a tree went down and that's just what we're dealing with today. So I'm gonna take one last video clip before we finish this. And I'm gonna show, let's see here, 250. So that means we've been running on generator power for almost three hours. And I think it's gonna be restored here in a couple hours. But, just wanted to show, we're running the house. Oh, you can't really see the tractor from here. Let's walk outside. Uh, we've been running in the house here. I mean, the dishwasher's going. We've had the laundry going. The stove's going, the microwave's been going. The kids all took showers. We have an electric water heater here. Um, we pretty much ran this whole system. The entire house, like I said, uh, 15,000 watts. And we still out here just 